let's go ahead and start this thing up and uh, rock and roll. You know, wait until he's uh, back here and um, let him get his fly on. I mean, I understand. You yeah, know. you got to fly when you can. Yeah, absolutely. So, hello, everyone, and welcome. This is PP Dragampo's Paramotor Podcast, Clear Prop TV, and Paratalk.org. Uh, we are coming to you live from bad apples now our guest james sutherland he is kicking back he's just going to go out for a quick flight but he will be back at seven o'clock sharp so he says i don't know if that's even possible because it usually takes me 10 minutes just to lay out my wing but hey when you're charlie soap you can do whatever you want to right so anyways uh, i figure we'll take this opportunity to uh, say hello to everybody and uh do our do our intro uh, my name is Sean Simons, PPG Grandpa. You can always find me at ppggrandpa.com. I run paramotorarkansas.com flight school and also a nonprofit organization called runintothesky.org. Welcome. I'm a dog dad. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and say hi to Will Fly. He's also over at Bad Apples. I don't know if his internet's good or not, but we'll find out here in three two one what's up what's up <laughs> can you hear me yeah hear you good man oh man bad apples it's funny james just walked by and he said oh i gotta be on clear prop and i'm like oh yeah that's right clear prop <laughs> i gotta but then i couldn't you know it does that two two factor three factor four factor identification and so anyways i'm here and i'm glad to be here Excellent. Well, we're glad that you're here too. How, how's Bad Apples been? Uh, it's uh, hasn't actually started yet. This is Monday, and it starts on what Wednesday, I think. And right. It's already filling uh, up pretty fast. Well. I they're think that one it think starts Thursday. Thursday. Yeah, it should start Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. And they're expecting 400 pilots this year, so it should, wow. be, should be wide open. So, so what have you what have you done? When when did you get there, and, and have you flown yet, or what's going on over there? No, I haven't. I haven't flown yet, but I got here just today, uh, probably about four hours ago, and uh, just. Is it I mean, already packed? No, it's not. I wouldn't call it packed. I mean, but it uh, will become. It packed. will be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really crazy. But bad apples is just one of those places. Like most flyings, it's not about the flying, because you know you fly anytime. But there's so many people here, and it's just going from one place, one tent to the next, to the next, and. I mean, you could spend your whole day talking to some of these guys, you know, so right. uh, come on out to that house, man. Yeah, I wish I could. I got students this week. Uh, matter of fact, um, we got uh, Butch. He got his fifth flight in today. And not only that, but he uh, and I went up at the same time and uh, did a little cross country. So he's got his first cross country on his fifth flight. Crazy. Dang. So he landed out? No, no, we did a complete cross country and he came back and landed perfectly at the LZ. That is awesome. That is awesome. Damn, Bill, uh, Butch has caught up to me. That's messed up. <laughs> <laughs> he is. <laughs> He's caught up to me now. <laughs> right. So. But I'm about to get a bunch of flights starting Wednesday because then I'm going to a fly in Wednesday. So. <laughs> That's right. So uh, sure, well, right? Depending on the is weather, do what will for the shore is that yeah eastern shore yep it's called uh, spring wing and spring then they wing. spring wing yeah then they have soar the shore in September so they do two fly-ins there but different parts of the year cool. May and I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna turn my video off because I think it'll make the audio a little bit better and. Uh, I'll, I'm going to try it anyways. I, I hear you fine. Yeah, you're you're okay. Yeah. Okay. We don't have any problems at all. Good. Doing good. Um, so anyways, glad that you're here, buddy. And uh, we're just going to try to make this a quick show. I mean, we know that you guys are going to be, uh, hey, Butch, we were just talking about you, man. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you took, but if you take your phone and turn it sideways, we can see you better. There you go. Horror there he is. Players. What's yeah. up, Scuba? Congratulations. What's up, Butch? You have caught up to me in flights, man. I feel bad now. You've caught up to me, and I've been doing it since last year. So good for you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 
All right. So who else do we have in here? I guess since uh, Scuba Steve has been yapping a little bit. How are you doing, Mr. Scuba Steve? Good to see you, man. I'm great. And just I'm looking forward to this flying as long as the weather holds out. I think it's supposed to be nice Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then it's supposed to rain over the weekend. So that's going to suck. But if we get some good flying in Wednesday and Thursday or, or Thursday and Friday, at least, then I'll be happy because I'm going to work Wednesday and then head right up to the fly-in after work and see how it goes. You said Thursday after work, so you'll be there Thursday? No. You're going to be Wednesday, there? Wednesday after work, I'll Wednesday. be there. Yep. All right, so Wednesday after work, and then you're going to be there all day Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday? There you go. Nice. Wow. Lucky. Um, well, I mean, it – I could come back home, but every time I make the trip to the Eastern Shore, it costs like 20 bucks to cross that bridge. So I don't want to go back and forth every because that'll be expensive. So I'm going to have to stay, I guess. You'll have to fly across. Yeah, you got to fly across. Uh, we'll, yeah, fly well, that's a lot of water. I'm not crossing that much water. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> I don't care how many floats I got. I'm not going across that much water. <laughs> I hear you. Well, glad that you're here, and I know that you got a podcast on Friday nights over at paramotordude.com. There you go. Come check it out. Absolutely. Hey, Jim, what's up with your uh, maple syrup smelling money, my friend? Good to see you. <laughs> hey, it's good to be seen. Um, we've been, I've been trying to get Butch to, you know, learn everybody's, uh, information and who they are. And he goes, Jim, that's that maple syrup guy, right? What the heck? I did. It's called Sticky Jim. <laughs> there you go. Oh my goodness, man. You run an awesome, uh, printing and publishing company. Can you tell us a little bit about Mr. Jim? Sure. I can. I can help you with your printing. I can print you stickers. I can print you uh, signs. I can print, yeah, all that. Checks, business cards, door hangers, I don't know, brochures, calendars. We got the good calendar. wheel out there with all the people's custom calendars. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so you can do all sorts of things for you. Just connect with me, come to search care printing and you'll find me and it, and that's that's your qr code right so we can just qr code you right now yeah you betcha yeah excellent come right to me excellent i heard that i'm also worth 10 percent. is that still true uh okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> how, how does that how does that work you just mentioned that you saw or you heard about this on ppg grandpa show and we will uh, give you 10% off your order. Freaking awesome. I think I just saw a hay bale. Did you see that too? That's awesome. All right. Uh, so I guess we're just kind of waiting right now. So Will, if you want to just, you know, let us know what's going on out there. Go ahead and show us bad apples. Oh, now you're going back in your camper? Come on, show us bad apples real quick, no, Will. Uh, you, can't, you can't have both. It's so, it's so noisy out there. There's no way you'd be able to hear me. So I had to put it on mute, but I wanted to show, you know, some of the excitement. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're, was, uh, we're still, we're still waiting. It's one of those days. Yeah, we're still waiting on, on uh, James. So go ahead and go out there. Let's uh, take a look and, uh, and hear the sounds and take a look. We'll wait until uh, James gets back in. Okay. So tell us what you see, bro. All right. So right now we've got one, two, three, four, just four in the uh, air right uh, now. It, uh, can you hear me? Hear you perfect. Right, I don't yeah. hear anything in the background, man. You don't see anything in the background? No, we don't hear anything. We just hear you. It's like you're the only oh, one wow. here. Yeah. yeah. It's a Gosh, that's incredible. There's there's Brian Haybell Waller doing his thing. So uh, this is one of those days where, you know, it was, yeah, we're not going to fly. We're not going to fly. It's not going to be flyable. But then the first person takes off and then all of a sudden, you know, everybody wants to fly. Mm. So um, waiting for James Sutherland and I might even catch his uh, landing. I don't know how he's going to do that in 10 minutes. But, <laughs> but Well, it's... Uh, it's it's already been 10 minutes, so, you know, you're more <laughs> welcome. You're, you're, uh, 
you're everything right now. That's all we're watching is your screen. So show everything that you got going on out there. I mean, this is bad apples. I wish I was there. Mm -hmm. We got somebody taking off. Yep. So um, the nice thing about bad apples is not only do you get to meet a whole bunch of neat people, just about every vendor you could possibly imagine has is represented here. So if you mm. have questions um, or even want to try a different wing, something like that, I think that's I think that's James up there. Let's see if I can get it. Yeah, I think that's there we go. I think that's James up there. And, yeah, I uh, got a couple you, people ready to launch. You know, it, it sounds like you're you're showing a video and you're voiceovering. We hear nothing in the background, just your voice. Well, that's I can't. I don't think I can make that any better. No, um, I, was, I was hoping to hear something in the background, but a guy. amazing noise cancellation. Yes, we hear nothing, just your voice. No. Wow, oh. that's incredible. It's just super loud here. Yeah, just hey, so your voice. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. So now we have eleven in the air, but it'll get to the point where it's just so many in the air that <laughs> I don't know. You probably it, it, it wouldn't be a time for a beginner to fly, I guess. But that's not the benefit of coming to a flying like this. It's meeting all the other people. You learn so much. Um, at, at any level, whether you're a beginner or, or super experienced, you're always learning something. <clears throat> so, yeah. <clears throat> Sorry for the perfect audio. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's amazing, man. I mean, it really just, I, I swear that you weren't really there. You're just doing a voiceover for a video. No, uh, I guess that's uh, that's uh, I guess that's Apple for you. That is pretty freaking awesome, brother. Let's yeah, I, yeah. I, I mean, it's just been amazing. Um, so, um, how long are you gonna stay out there, man? I'm gonna stay out here uh, till Monday. I'm gonna leave Monday. One of okay. the best flights at Bad Apples I've ever had was the day after everybody left. You know, you kind of have the field all to yourself and. It's just kind of special. Hodges Field has a special place in my heart and in the heart of many, many people. Uh, Mac Hodges uh, has operated this place at a loss for quite some time. And he's done that because of his love of aviation and, you know, the people that are associated with it. So um, this is just an awesome place and I'm grateful to uh, to have it. Yeah, that's that's absolutely amazing. It looks really awesome. Kind of really wish that I was there. Um, like I said, you know, we we're, we did amazing uh, um, uh, cross country with Butch today. He's got his fifth flight in. We're going to be doing more flights this week. I mean, this guy is doing freaking amazing. Um, we got um, another student. Uh, our our, uh, our most how, how do I say this correctly? Um, not the oldest, but the most. Um, well, the oldest student. Seasoned. <laughs> yeah, well seasoned. Oh. Yes, yes. <laughs> Most well seasoned at 75. <laughs> and uh, he's been doing really good too. He's, he's very, uh, he comes every morning and he trains really, really hard. So, you know, and Butch comes every day and trains really hard also. And uh, I'm just, it's just really nice to be able to get some people out there. And, you know, I, I don't mind not going to Bad Apples to be able to see some amazing people take their first flights and then, you know, go from first flights to cross country to, you know, all these amazing things that you get to do as far as being in the paramotor uh, community. If you guys I have are an instructor. I watched a video that, that Kahlo did and he was training or trying to train somebody that was around 75 years old. And from what he was saying, the the older you are, it's harder for your brain to learn new things like that. So, I mean, if if the guy that you got is doing good, then, hey, that's great. But it's hard for them to relearn or learn things when you get that that age, from what I understand. 
Yeah, he he decided that he doesn't. He's not looking to get up quickly. He said that he'll take as long as he needs to take. Uh, he doesn't mm-hmm. live too far away from us, so he just comes when he wants to. Um, he trains when he wants to, and you know, makes okay. it makes it makes it makes it good. That's a big field, Will. You're making me jealous. Uh, oh, it's a huge field. The, the nice thing about Hodges Field, I'm going to get down here to the grass. This grass is like freaking carpet. It's like a golf course grass. Wow. And even when it rains, I mean, 10 minutes later or five minutes later, you come out and it's like dry as can be. Touch the grass. Touch the grass. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> an awesome field. So I'm going to sit out here, Shane, and kind of have it in the background, if you can still hear me and everything. Um, okay. You can see some of the activity. You, you could have a paramotor right behind you and we probably wouldn't hear it. So we yeah, don't hear nothing, man. And I'm, <laughs> and, 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 and I'm Sean, by the way, not Shane. Oh, Sean. <laughs> John. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I'm looking at Shane. <laughs> <laughs> it's no problem. That's what this is all about, just having fun. But man, it looks like it's really nice. Um, uh, we got people that are kiting. Oh no, it looks like there. No, another trike went up behind you. Okay, so we yeah, got most people through. that are out. They were kiting earlier, but most people that are out now are setting up to launch. Okay, yeah, we don't hear anything, man. It just looks like you got a fake ve- a virtual background. <laughs> That's a I lot of people you, flying, man. Hey, hey, Brian Waller, is this a is this a real background or is it a fake ba- background? Uh, I don't know. It looks fake to me. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for having my back, bro. Real, Will. <laughs> yeah, wait, wait until you watch this uh, whenever you get the chance to on a real computer, and you'll be like, you've got to be kidding. There's nothing. I mean, absolutely nothing. No noise, nothing. Uh-uh. Is it? What, what are you on? Are you on an iPhone or what? I'm on a MacBook. MacBook Air. Oh, wow. And, I- and I'm... I'm amazed. I cannot believe it's not pick, picking up the background noise. Wow. MacBook Air. Huh. I, I wonder how many people out there right now that are uh, listening to the show. We got 15 people, 16 people watching right now. Is Am I correct? Is that what you see, Scuba Steve? Yeah, 17 right now. Okay. Um, we got Slow Days out there. We got Kramer. Uh, of course, our uh, Jim Maple Syrup, uh, Guardian Service Dogs, Mad Sloper, Michael, Jasper, Bonnie, Franz, Daniel Roosh, uh, Grandmaster UV, Tony Marzano, Scott, and Angie Garland. Um, is, did I get everybody so far? J- oh, Jim Sierra uh, 120's on. Good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. So we got a bunch of people on here. Good deal. Thank you guys for jumping on uh, we got uh, nine likes and 16 views so is james landon i'm just, no that's not james it's only been like 25 minutes he you know his 10 minute thing <laughs> yeah he, he's he's at the 20 minute mark i'm not surprised though i mean really what why why be on a show when you can be out fly all right <clears throat> i got a question while we're killing time yeah. Y'all know a lot about aircraft radios because I just got mine yesterday and it's kind of weird because I've tried messing with the squelch. If I touch the antenna, it's quiet. If I let go, I have to touch the antenna. I, I don't I don't get it. Now I can hear the t- I can hear the tower from the Air Force Base, but man, they talk fast. So whenever I do have to contact them. This is a Yaesu 550, which is probably not going to show up on the screen very well. There it is. It actually did very well. We could see it perfect. Wow, that's loud. But yeah. What's loud? You, oh, you didn't hear it? <laughs> no, the noise cancellation on everybody's stuff is just amazing. Well, I know this one has noise cancel, but I'm surprised it didn't cancel that out. That was really loud. Didn't hear a thing. <laughs> Didn't hear a yeah, thing. So when, when your motor is running, that's when it does that, right? Um, Steve? When my motor's running? No. This is right here in, in my office. When you touch it. And you turned your squelch interference. up? Yeah, I can turn it. When I turn the squelch up, I have to turn it almost all the way up to make it go away. But I can, if I'm touching yeah, I, it, I can turn the squelch all the way down. 
Sounds you have like to do a the same track. thing on my iPhone. Whoa, whoa. Who, what, who, what, what, who said what? <laughs> I, I have to do the same thing on my icon. I, I basically have, have it's got a setting from one to 10 and I keep it on 10. The oh, wow. Okay. So it's not just me. All right. I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, yeah. well, I did another antenna and it's completely quiet. It's a real short antenna, which is great for short range, but it's not good for long range. I can turn the squelch way down on that one, but I don't know. Maybe I'll play around or get a different antenna because. Uh, it sounds like something about the grounding so far. It sounds just like grounding issues. It's weird. Oh, I got I got it blocked where I won't broadcast by accident right now because I don't want to contact that tower. And then they go, hey, what are you doing? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> So on, on that, and we talked about this before, about uh, if you have a resistor cap mm -hmm. um, and if you're using a resistor cap and you're using a spark plug that's also a resistor spark plug, somehow those two cancel each other out. So try you could try using just a regular spark plug to see if that helps. Well, I have a, a line filter too, but I'm... Um... I haven't even hooked a headset yet to it, so I don't, or take it, taking it flying yet. So we'll see. So, Will, what is a resistor cap spark plug? What'd you just, what'd you say? Is a resistor, no, I'm, I am not a mechanic, so I don't know. But um, it's, I guess, the cap that goes on your spark plug. They do something special to it where it, it keeps the, uh, it keeps it from interfering with uh, radio signals interfering with radio signals. But then so does the spark plug. If the spark plug has an R in it, like, what is it, BR, B1, I don't know. BR549. <laughs> yeah, yeah, BR549. But if it has an R in it, it's a resistor spark plug. And so you've got a resistor cap and a resistor plug, and those two are kind of canceling each other out if they're used in combination. Uh -huh. You only need one or the other. Um, that, that may help. This has been the bane of my existence, and that's clear communication. I've not yet been able to find a solid uh, way of doing it. I'm pretty good on the aviation radio because I I kind of know what they're going to say. I kind of expect it, and I can fill in the gaps. Mm -hmm. uh, can you hear that? Barely. I heard some roar, like a motor noise just for a second. Um, so it's just something to try. I've also tried those little feral barrels or whatever they're called. They're little barrels with magnets in it that you can clip around wires. They yeah, that's, help what, some that's what this is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're going to use those, though, you want to put a piece of tape, tape, tape around it because I have had them come, come off. And, yeah, uh, Tony, I got a, I got a risky biscuit. All right, I got to tell you, I saw something today. I must be old and not with the times. Have y'all heard of Mr. Funnel? Nobody has. Do you know what it does? It blows my mind. It removes water from gas. So if you get a giant thing of gas and it gets water in it, you can pour this through this filter and it takes the water out of the gas and only puts fuel in there. It also will, because ethanol will mix with water, you can put more, like if you buy ethanol gas and you put, you add water to it, the ethanol will bind with the water, then run it through the filter, and then you'll have non-ethanol gas. Wait a minute, what's the, what is it called? Mr. Yeah. Funnel, look it up on Amazon. I kid you not, I watched uh, Scary Barry do it, and I was like, you gotta be kidding me. He literally pours it in there, nothing comes out but fuel. No water. He had like three drops, so he did it twice, pure fuel. I was like, wow, man, that's awesome. I need that for, you know, you get, you get condensation or whatever in your fuel tank all the time. That's a good way to get it. Oh, you got him. John Wayne's got a Mr. Funnel. It works. There you go. <laughs> They're like yeah, one yeah, bucks on Amazon, but that's some, that's some good stuff right there. I was like, man, I'm so getting one of those. <laughs> Even even without the <laughs> even without the the I guess the Mister Funnel or whatever you can make your own ethanol free gas. 
And so if you pour, I think it's 20, 26 ounces of water per gallon of regular, you know, with ethanol gas, uh -huh. that water, uh, the ethanol will, is more soluble in the water than it is the gasoline and the water and the ethanol will settle to the bottom. But the, the only problem with that is the ethanol is also used to increase octane. So if you're going to do that, you need to start with a higher octane level. In other words, you wouldn't start, if you started with a 90 to whatever octane level okay. the time you were done you'd be you'd be at a lower octane so oh i got you i got you i didn't think about it bringing the octane level down but you also know too that the lower the octane the more power there is right well i didn't think about it that way so huh. and then as far as the two cycle the two stroke motors that we use how would that affect it and that's something i'd have to investigate I only use the 87 non-ethanol, and I've been doing that for years, and I've had no problems at all. Matter of fact, I liked having that extra power because, I don't know, it feels like it runs better than the uh, 92, 93. Yeah. So well, here, because... here's something that would be a neat exper experiment if uh, for anyone to do. Just take a little of regular gasoline and then pour a little bit of water but but know how much water you're putting in there like one ounce two ounces or whatever and then pour it in the gasoline and then let it settle and you'll see that if you pour start it out with one ounce of water you'll end up with 1.2 of the clear stuff at the bottom so that other extra is the ethanol that's also settled yeah um, kind of kind of interesting that's what, that's what I was saying, that you could use that filter. If you, you add water to the gasoline so that the ethanol can bond with it, then you when you filter it again, it takes all that out, and you just got regular gas then. Or you could siphon from the top. Yeah, you, you could do that. You just got to be careful. <laughs> yeah. yeah you <laughs> get a little too low, and oh, man, I, got, I pulled water up in there. That's right. I'm, I'm not exactly sure how that works though i mean how does it it's, remove it's a hydrophobic filter or something so it repels water so when you put gas through it it keeps the water out but lets the fuel through so the water stays on inside the actual fuel in the funnel there you go oh. yep and the gas comes out of the bottom it, it's amazing to watch i was like wow it's really working i mean he did it because he, he went and bought like 55 gallons of non-ethanol fuel, and it just so happened that the gas station he got it from, there was water in their gas, so he had to go and filter all that stuff. Yeah, that's it right there. That's it. Interesting. Well, Mr. Funnel, yeah, we don't know about that. Steve. Removes water, dirt, and debris. That's the other good thing. It not only it not only gets the water out, it gets all kind of dirt and crap that's in those gas tanks that's sitting at fuel. Because don't think that all the fuel comes out of them pumps or, or dirt free, because they're not. Especially uh, a fuel tanker's in there filling at the moment you fill up. That's the worst time you can fill up your car is when they're pumping gas in there because it mixes all that crap up that's in the bottom. So don't fill your car up when one of those tanker trucks are filling the big tanks. Yeah, I've definitely heard that a lot of times and I've uh, seen those tanker trucks there and I just move on to the next. Hmm. Yeah. Yo, okay, so here's a, here's a good question. So you filter, and that is neat. That's actually a lot simpler than, you know, letting it settle and siphoning from the top. Right. But then the question would be, non-ethanol gas costs more, right? So yeah. if you, I wonder what the real comparison is to buying the regular gas and then filtering out the excess or the ethanol. I wonder how that weighs out. Well, the only real value is that you're not going to, your lines are going to stay longer. But yeah. I mean, it still burns, it's functional, and there's no real point in getting rid of the ethanol. Yeah, well, I meant like monetarily, you know, the, the cost of it took, the 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 water and the ethanol does do a number on your membranes and stuff on your carburetor. So I've been using non-ethanol, and you know, I mean, every year I do a maintenance uh, maintenance anyways, but I don't have any problems. Matter of fact, my carburetor still feels like it's brand new. Now, when I first started, I was too cheap, and I used the uh, the F, the 
the ethanol gas, you know, the stuff that you normally get at the pump and the membranes and stuff, I'd have to replace those things like twice a year. So it does, it, it does mess up your, your carburetor, I think, um, if you don't use the non-ethanol. So having a fuel filter like that probably would be pretty good. What do you guys think? I mean, what is your experience on the panel? And what, do you, what is your experience uh, in the Super Chat? Let us know, because this is a really interesting topic that we're talking about. Yeah, I, I just yeah, thought it was cool. Right. It's, it's, a, it's a great addition to have. I mean, you never know when you're going to get water in your fuel. So it's a good way to get rid of it. Or you could try to use it to get ethanol out of your gas if you want to go that way. I think so. so that's only for gas that's not after you mix it with with oil right i mean that's just your gas no it doesn't matter even if it's mixed it's fine really cuz cuz gas mixes huh. with that oil gas mixes with oil gas does not mix with water that's why it separates gas is from oil interesting eric von eric thank you very much for your donation we definitely appreciate that yeah uh, i've i've never huh I'm gonna have to mess around with that. I'm gonna have to buy one. I actually just put one in yeah. my Amazon my Amazon cart, and I'm like, I'm gonna check this out. It's yeah. cool. Let us know how it goes, cause I'm I know I'm gonna get one too. I just not yet. I'm gonna wait till after this fly in, then I'll get it. <laughs> Jeremy said, get ethanol free gas yeah. if you can find it, and John Wayne said the new membranes will use ethanol. Mm. Hmm. I've never had a problem. Hello, There's everybody. Oh, you're back. That will, uh... It's only been 10 hey, minutes. Hey, what's up, James? <laughs> hey, 10 minutes, 10 minutes. Man. And that was the 10 quickest minutes. 10 minutes ever. <laughs> I was on my, my wife, my ex-wife's time. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Well, glad that you made it, James. Uh, uh, so uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and how did you get into paramotoring? I... Um, am the owner of, or one of the owners of a chemical company called Sutherland Products. We make Charlie soap, and I was looking for something to do. Didn't know what I wanted to do. I started hiking a lot, and then my buddy got um hurt doing some paragliding, and I thought, well. That must have been really stupid. So let me look into why he got hurt. And the next thing you know, I'm looking at statistics of PPG versus every other kind of flying. Um, and it seemed pretty safe. So I I don't know. I fell in love with it immediately, even though my, my really close friend had just gotten paralyzed in his right leg. Um, I don't know. It was just something I had to do. So I had never been able to fly before. Uh, I, it was very, very scary to me to get off the ground or be even in a swing that was swinging up high. Um, but I got over that and been flying ever since. In fact, Brian Goff is here who taught me and got me in the air for the first time. And he was remembering today how he had to basically talk me into the air. I mean, there was... I was so scared. He, he didn't think that I would ever actually take off. Not because I didn't have the skills, but just because I was so scared of <laughs> Excuse me. So when did you start flying? About, about seven years ago, 2016. Um, and uh, yeah, it's been, it was like 60 flights the first year. <laughs> Excuse me. Sure thing. Um, about 60 flights the first year and then 100 flights and then 200 flights and then I built the van and since the van it's been about 400 flights a year 400 flights a year now I just, we had we had an appointment and I made you wait 20 minutes so I can get a flight in well yeah I I respect that my friend absolutely I mean, <laughs> uh, uh, me, I'm sorry and no. that's why I'm going to fly probably more than most people. 
No, you know, I mean, if I had the opportunity to go fly, well, wait a minute, I kind of did. But, you know, if, if I could right. go fly some more, you know, I would definitely go do it. I mean, so I totally understand. And and this is only one day for me a week. So if I if I can't go fly the rest of the week, something's wrong with me. Yeah, well, I hear that. Um, I just got an opportunity just now. Uh, Ryan, Ryan O'Connor, I think his name. Um I don't know his last name. Ryan, uh, he's my really good friend. He's helped me with a bunch of my motor problems with the Polini 303. Um, he just let me borrow his daughter's Adam 80. And I took it up on my thermaling wing on my trike. And so it was really lifty. And I was able to fly an Adam 80, even though I'm like 215, 220 pounds sometimes. Um, but that was my first, I'd say my first, uh, barefooted takeoff other than being at the beach that one time. So. Well, I mean, my go-to, my go-to motor is a, an Adam 80 and I've been flying it when I was 250 pounds and I'm down to 220 pounds and it's fine. Nice. It has, yeah. Lots of lift, lots of power. Adam what kind of wing? What, like what size wing are you flying? Like a 30? I usually, I usually fly the, my uh, 28s. Shit. All right. And you're at sea level or are you... Yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty close, about 250 to 300 feet um, above sea level. And, okay. and I, can, I can take off in like 10 to 15 steps, nil wind. With, yeah, with an Adam 80. So people that are like, oh, I need a mm -hmm. multi 25, you might want to try an Adam 80 first. Yeah, there, I mean, it's, it's a nice little rig. I, I wouldn't say it was quick to get off the ground, but it, like, it was fun. And with the 29, it was exactly what I needed. I, I, I've been going for as, as low and slow as I could possibly go um, for about a year and a half now. Not low, but just slow. Um, I like the Bodie wings for some reason. It's, it's, I'm not like scared of the fast stuff. It's just, it seems like there's a lot of stuff going on. Well, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and you and you miss it when it, when the wings going very fast. You 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 miss all the physics that's going on. And so with a really slow wing, like I don't know, it seems seems like it's more intimate with what's going on with the air, what's going on with the 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 thermals and just everything. And I don't know. Everybody told me to get into a B wing if I wanted to get into maneuvers. So I, I went to a B like a high B and now I've got a low B that I bought just, just because it's slow and fun. Anyways. I agree. I agree. I like the Bodie wings. The Bodie wings are really awesome. Uh, especially in nil wind, you can get up in almost zero steps. I really like it. Yeah. Hey James, are you still traveling with the uh, aviator? I'm not. Well, right now I'm not. I, I took a little time off from them just because I had to go back and work on some stuff for my business. We just got into Walmart for the first time and it's been really hectic. So I had to come home. Also, my, I had some, some family issues and I had to like basically re rebuild a house um, or a home. And so that there was there were some things that, that kind of took me away from focusing on the aviator thing. And then when when I did have some time, I got an invite or an opportunity to go and hang out with Santa Cruz. No, Say that again. Uh, it just looks like Will's running, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, he's like on a one wheel, I think. I think he's on that one. I think he's on a Segway. Oh, okay. Yeah. It sounds so much cooler when you said I was on a one wheel. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You're on the most expensive one wheel ever. Yes, there we go. There it is. <laughs> hey, I James, I can say I can say this about James. He's when he says uh, he likes to fly or he flies a lot. He is. I thought I had it bad. I mean, I thought I flew every possible chance I get. But this guy flies. He flies multiple times a day sometimes, don't you? Yeah. I, if it's good, I'll usually get multiples. Because it's, like, it's not the flying; it's the landing and the launching that I like so much. So you got it, you got it for some money, That's for sure. You love to fly, man. Yeah, and there was a, a time where I was doing too many launches and landings, and it looked like I was just 
bumping up my numbers is of flights. So I would like force myself to go and fly 30 minutes on every flight. Huh. So if I had two hours to fly, I'd get four flights, but I would do 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes. So I could like guarantee I had some time in the air. Anyways. I think we got a uh, question in the super chat. Uh, Jim, can you uh, let us know what that is, please? Uh, oh, Jim, I can see it by. <laughs> Jim CR120 was wondering, since oh, you're like doing some pre-flying now, can you share what the experience was like? Um, free flight is a crucial experience in every form of the of the word. I've never had to be so focused on where I was and what I was doing in my life. I don't think that the powered paragliding really is is like it in that regard. Um, you can kind of be absent-minded with powered paragliding once you get going, like once you get your skills set together and you can launch in nil winds, then nil winds are going to act like nil winds just about every time. Um, and so it's, you can get to this level of, of complacency and it's, I'm not going to say it's safe. You know, the guy with a broken leg is not going to say it's safe, but um, it's safer. It seems safer because when you get on that hill and you're just running off the hill and, and then you want to fly low, but you don't have the you don't have throttle, you don't have lift, you know, I have to push a button. And so sorry about that. Um and and it's just very it's very immediate and and kind of a be here now process kind of thing. Um, because if you are not a hundred percent aware of your of your of your situation. You could end up paraplegic in a very quick second. You can be dropped on your ass right on your spinal cord with, you know, while like right when you were thinking that everything was fun. Um, mm -hmm. and, and there are ways to it. There's ways to mitigate that. There's ways to, to make it safe. And if you go and find somebody that that, that dials in safety on every aspect of his teaching then like you're going to be okay and that's i felt really good with with santa croce he was it's like he was a guru and he knew everything there was to know about flying um and there's that but what also i thought was cool was every time that he had a point about flying to make it was a safety point it was every single time that he talked about any kind of um, technique or situation or weather or rule or uh, gear, anything. It was all from some safety aspect. And he had this, I don't know, it, it changed my it changed my whole flying, my thoughts about flying, at least, I think. It was pretty, it was pretty eye-opening, two weeks. Um, and I can't wait to get back out there. So um, you okay. So oh, you flew uh, free flying for how many years before you got into paramotoring or both together or how'd that work? So I started paramotoring seven years ago. I had never done free flying until three weeks ago. Oh, okay. Wow. Gotcha. Yes. I called Santa Croce or I sent him a text and I sent this huge long um, letter diatribe about everything I'd done in paragliding all of my problems, all of my gear, all of my training, you know, hanging out with uh, with all the schools that I've been to and and getting my certification and the tandem certification and all that. And I said, I just worked with, with Aviator. They chose me to be the brand ambassador. And he he sent me back. It, it was a, a very long email. And I he sent me back an email with like maybe two sentences in it. And it said, James, I know who you are get out here as soon as you can and and i was like excellent this is the guy that i probably need to be talking to um and when i got out there it was like i, I got to watch him turn away he, i mean he had to turn away students right and left because people were coming to him constantly on the hill and then there were certain people that you saw on the hill that had so much energy and so much like want to do well 
even though they didn't have an instructor, they just they just had the drive. And so he would go over there and help those people. And basically anybody that really wants to do well, he's there to help you. And and I don't know, he, he's got a lot of good videos on safety. And uh, I'd definitely go check him out if you can. Superfly with paragliding. Will, I hope you brought a pen with you because it seems like a lot of people know you and you're going to have to sign some autographs. God, no, I don't. No, I charge for an autograph. <laughs> <laughs> Will knows a ton of people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> huh? You're on uh, national television right now. Yeah. That's That's right. Your shirt off. <laughs> this got to keep it PPG. Take your shirt off. <laughs> never know what people are going to say. We didn't hear anything what they say. Oh, good. Then never mind. Something about taking a shirt off. I did oh, well, my first water foot drag. <laughs> well, go back, Will. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, James, tell us about your uh, first water uh, foot drag. Uh, that, that was it. I was just, um, I was so excited, man, just to get, I don't know. It seems like it's so much fun. Everybody else doing it. I never got to do it on the track. But you did, you did grass foot drags before the water, though, right? Uh, I, no. Not really. Yeah, I did a little bit. I did a oh, couple okay. foot drags, a couple foot drags, but then the water's right there at Bad Apples, and so right. I just I was gonna I say, <laughs> water on your first one would be kind of scary, I would think. But no, I, I've done foot drags on my trike before, but I never have gone to the water because if you on the trike, you only get like six or eight inches of drag. Like your leg can only bend six or eight inches. And right. like with a with foot launching, you've got like maybe a foot and a half of like travel that you're playing with, and and it's okay if your cage touches in the water, but if your wheel touches in the water, you're you're going in. So I, I know I, I don't want to do that, and so I've never done a, a wheel drag or a trike water drag. Anyways. So today was the first. It was fun. So do you only do trike or foot launch and trike? And how long have you been doing each? Okay, I've got 1,450 trike flights or 1,438 or something like that. And uh, I have about 95 foot launches and about 30 paragliding flights. Well, yeah, because so, when you were... When you were doing the tour, you didn't have a trike, did you? Um, you mean out west? Yeah, you were doing foot launch then, huh? I did a couple of foot launches, but I had just learned, and I did have my trike on me. I, I, that was um, out there in Salton Sea, man. It was cool to to fly a trike in front of everybody and like get all the accolades or whatever. Um, and plus, it was just cool to be down in those canyons. At Salt and Sea. I don't know if any of y'all have been out there, but it's beautiful. Um, I got to fly Moab and Salt and Sea, and of course the uh, circus. Now, did I see you at Salt and Sea, or did I see you at Circus? Both. We were both. Yeah. yeah. Um, the got trike to was fly fun. That Viper XC. That was pretty cool. Do you like it? I did. I, I really enjoyed it. It it definitely has got more play than my Mac Para, but uh, but then it was a heck of a lot smaller too. Yeah, it was a little small. <laughs> um, but the those two wings, the Viper XC and the Free Ride Two that Aviator gave me to um, take out there, they're both very fun wings. Everybody that I know that flies the free ride too is just enamored with it fully. Not there's not a single person that has bought one that isn't like in love with it. Really, I might have to do that one day. Yeah, um, it's a it's definitely a higher wing, but it's it's a D wing. I mean, I think it's it's a D wing, full on, non rated, all that unrated. Yeah, definitely have to try that out. Hey, Scuba Steve, is there any questions in the Super Chat? Yeah, um, Jim CR was asking, um, since you're uh, a longtime trike pilot, how are you liking foot launch this year since you started foot launch? Uh, it's, a, it's a lot of work, first off. I mean, that's my first impression is just 
it's a it's a man's game or like it's just a tougher person's game no not i mean chauvinistically it's a man's game but because there's a lot of beautiful women in this thing um but it's it's a it's a workout yeah i mean compared to a trike where you have none of the weight then you foot launch and you got all that weight on your back and you have to run so (laughs) i could see that yeah I launched with 32 liters of fuel the other day. Now, that is heavy. How much is 32 liters? That should be eight gallons. How did you, how's that even? How many pounds? About 50. 50 pounds. How how many gallons? Five gallons? Well, it's four liters per gallon about, and he said he had 32 liters? Yeah. That's eight? Yeah, eight, gallons of, eight gallons of fuel. Yeah. How many gallons can you uh, have in your paramotor in Canada? As many as I want. Oh, <laughs> oh that's, that's good. <laughs> I get one benefit of living up here. <laughs> that's it. Uh, maple syrup hey, smell. My battery died, so I so I'm uh, I'm uh, mooching off James here. He's my peanut gallery. <laughs> Just That's... hook it into your little hoverboard, and it'll charge your phone <laughs> right around yeah. with. It. There you <laughs> go. Your hover panel has a USB. <laughs> yeah, does it? Should no. I it does. No, it but, doesn't. The uh, Segway doesn't. No. Oh. I wish it does. Um, yeah, there's a couple of them that do. Yeah, I think the new ones have uh, anything you want, Bluetooth, USB, whatever. Wow. That's crazy. I just bought one and didn't have one. Well, well, good. You just answered Jim CR's question there, Jim. He was like, is that legal in Canada? You already said, I can have as much as I want. <laughs> That would be really heavy. I don't even, I couldn't even fathom putting that much fuel, even if it was legal here. Uh uh-uh, uh, that's too heavy, man. Uh, I put, it, I usually put, I usually foot lunch five gallons, and that's what, 30 pounds? So, yeah. I've done that, which is why I fly big, big boaty wings. I just had the most fun I've ever had on a Adam 80 with like a breath of fuel in it and a 29 meter wing. That was my favorite setup I've ever had. Were you trying to win? I was so light. It was just, no, it was my 29 meter. Um, it's the one that I've thermaled with on my trike. Wow. But to be up on a like foot launch, it's like, it's so boaty and you're going like five miles an hour. <laughs> That's my favorite. <laughs> it, yeah. it all ha- like I used to fly Mac Para. I do still have my Mac Para and I still have like a. A drift air, it's fast as hell. But I took my my tandem up on, like I took a, a small little woman that weighed like ninety five pounds on my, my tandem one time, and we ended up going five miles an hour or something stupid. That was very slow. Came off the ground like that, and it was it was beautiful. And it took us forty five minutes to go around the field, basically. <laughs> wow. And, when I landed, I was like, I want to do that again. And like, so I went and bought the boatiest wing that I could get. That's cool. Yeah. Um, I've only been on two tandem rides and both of them were the time of my life. Absolute. I mean, if you haven't taken a tandem ride, They're you've fun. got to take it. it. I mean, it's just like, it gives you a whole, it gives you a whole nother perspective of the sport. Just totally enjoy yeah. it. Well, I think I'll try that this weekend. There's, we're going to the butt fan dust off and flying and he's going to be doing some tandems there so hopefully we'll get to try it for the first Dude, time. you will love it i haven't done a, a to it. paragliding tandem but art is good the butt band yeah, so, does so i learned this about i learned this about james uh today about all about the free flight stuff i mean that's pretty cool you know and um sure I, I don't know if i've met mike santa croce Chris. Oh, Chris Santa Croce. Uh, maybe I have. I don't know, but I, he's, I've he's, only heard good things about him. Right. He's the that's that's the kind of instructor you want to go to. You want to go to one that's like really good and that everybody likes. Yep. Because 
it, it's just the way it should be. Like people should be, they should be going to the the guys that like are likable, and because I don't know, usually just skills are likable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and what's that saying that it's something? I think it's about a lie, but bad news travels halfway across the. Yeah. world before the good news gets out of bed <laughs> yeah that's it man and and i'd have never even heard anything bad about chris sancrechi i don't know if y'all have heard much about it but i've never heard anything bad about it in fact i have I, i'm like um i pride myself in knowing a couple of like really good pilots and i've known them since i just got into the sport and every one of them said that you're nobody unless you've gone to see Chris. And it doesn't matter how good you are. You're just not there unless you've gone out there and let this guy see the way you fly and, and see if there's any kinks in your flying because, like, the dude can just really help you dial, get dialed in. Anyways, that's that's so that's why I went out. I have the – I want to be good. I want to be better. So how does he do that? How does he actually – Adjust. Do you have a charger? Uh, how, how does he actually evaluate your flying? Does he do it from the ground? Does he get up there and fly with you? He does it from the ground, and he's he's looking at your demeanor when you're stepping into the wing, when you're stepping up to him. He is reading you just like he's reading the wing when he's flying. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's kind of predicting what the wing's going to do before it actually does it. Right, and he's doing that with students, too. Yeah. Like, he's that good. Because of his experience. Because of his experience, and he's just seen so many bad people show up and step up to the plate, and he's seen Wahoos step up to the plate, and he's seen guys that were focused step up to the plate, and he's seen the difference in what happens. You know, if you can bring some energy and bring some focus, like, that guy can work with you. It's crazy. Like, yeah, I, I got I, I, I got hundred times more serious the minute I got there because I didn't know what it was going to take to kind of keep his. I don't know. It, it, being around him made me want to take everything very seriously and just act like a student, the best student I could be. Not to blow anybody up, but like he was really good. And he flies right out of Salt Lake City area. Um, yeah, he's he. They call him like the king of the hill, basically on the point of the mountain. So Salt Lake City has this place called Point of the Mountain, and Point of the Mountain is one of two sites in the in the whole world where there is a there's two valleys, and the wind will come. And and at some parts of the year, they said that it is consistent. Beautiful winds every morning from the south and beautiful winds every evening from the north. And they have a south mountain and a north mountain. And it's awesome. Wow, cool. And, and the, like, the paragliding is I have to take this back because uh, I'm trying to recover my phone because it's broken. Well, <laughs> I'm on. trying to not lose all my pictures. Hang on. This interview might stop without that. <laughs> he's gonna lose battery power really fast now we, we've got we've got a couple of we've got a percentage point or two <laughs> okay we, we should be okay that, that's oh, fine man. so so real quick then uh since we don't know how long your battery is going to last tell us a little bit about charlie soap how you got into that and now that you're into walmart what does that mean oh uh, okay i've been making soap since i or selling soap since i was eight years old I'm 45. Um, I, my dad has been selling soap since he was since 76, which was one year before I was born. And um, that's what my whole family is about. And, and we don't make a single bit of soap. All, all we do is make detergents. And uh, the, the people in our town just called it Charlie Soap. And we stuck the name to the bottom. Um, but we have the number one selling, or we at one time had the number one selling laundry detergent on Amazon. Um, and we played with the price until we got to about number four on Amazon. And that kind of works more economically for us. And now we had the largest rollout into Kroger 
um, in the history of Kroger um, two years ago and went to 2,600 stores. And then the next year, we added two more SKUs to that to those 2,600 stores. So it did okay. So you got Kroger and now you got Walmart. How are you keeping up with that demand? Uh, my father and I um, engineered a an automated powder production process. Mm -hmm. And so we turned this 5,000 square foot fireman's dance hall, basically an old fireman's dance hall from the 50s. We turned it into a very large machine. And so that machine pumps out about 16,000 pounds of powder a day. Um, and I can, in the evening, I can make 10,000 pounds just by myself um, with like three or four hours of work. Oh, okay. And, and so I've got two guys that can compete with Procter & Gamble and SC Johnson and uh, Unilever. I don't know what, the, I don't know why they do it so inefficiently. I can not, because, you know, this English major that flies paramotors can do it faster than they can. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty incredible. Now, your wing actually says Charlie Soap on it, right? Uh, yeah, the the first wing, like I, I bought gear from Blackhawk. Um, and then, you know, over over about a year, I learned that it wasn't the most efficient gear that I could have. And so I looked for better gear and and Brian Goff was was the Mac pair dealer at the time. And he, he got a, a logoed wing for me. Took him about, I don't know, like 11 weeks or something like that to get it. Um, but I thought it was cool because. Within two months, I would say like a year and a half, maybe two years of flying, maybe a year and a half, I got on a Tucker Guy video with that Charlie Soap wing. And so if it didn't help the Charlie Soap much, it definitely helped my my personal like uh, popularity in the sport or at least notoriety in the sport at first. Um, and it was actually another, like it was part of, of a growing thing for me because for the for like two years or three years everybody knew, knew me as the guy with the charlie soap wing and every time i showed up they were like oh i knew you were here because i saw the charlie soap wing and um i wanted to start getting good at flying so i, I got this other wing and i didn't have charlie soap on it and i decided to go to a fly-in without the charlie soap wing and that was i think grandpa the the one that the time that you went to um moonshiners yeah do you remember that I, I i think you showed up and like i don't know it was, it was tough to launch or something like that that yeah, was yeah. awesome yeah it was challenging i mean you're up in the mountains and and it's it's switchy it, but, it, um, it was it was a really rough time for me for sure up at uh, moonshiners <laughs> So, so I went up there and, and I had the intention of showing off. And so I had been working on my triking and working on my taxiing and all that. So I went up there and they have it like a T intersection and I took off or I inflated, turned 45 degrees, went out on the taxiway, turned 90 degrees with the wing inflated and then took off. And then when I came in, I landed like that. I landed, slowed down, took a 90 degree downwind turn. And then a 180 degree turn and landed next to my, my van. And I was like really showing off my skills. I, I thought, you know, I think I, I, I think I still right. got that. So I think I, I still I got like that. Super video. Excited. Yeah. I think I still got that video, man. <laughs> so I the, like, I knew that I was, I kind of was onto something when I, I ran into, uh, uh, Ripa and, and he was like, damn, Charlie. He's like, I, I didn't know that you were here. And I was just like, well, I was like, I didn't bring the Charlie Soap wing. And he was like, well, what are you flying then? And I was like, well, I was like, did you see a trike do some taxi? And he was like, man, there was a guy he landed and did like a 90 degree turn and like a 100 degree, 80 degree. I was like, that was me, man. And he's like, shit, dude. He's like, you're really like coming along on that shit. So um, <laughs> sorry, excuse my language. But yeah, um, yeah, the, he, he, uh, 
that was kind of like the turning point. Like I was going to be able to show some show off with triking, you know. Anyways, it was it was kind of cool. Are and you going to be able to get I'll... another Charlie Soap Wing, or what's going on with that? That's a good question. That is right a good there. question. I, I've tried to find somebody that really wants to put help me get a logo on a wing, and I can't find them. Like, I, I've heard there's a guy in um, Florida that does it, but I, I, nobody can get me in touch with him. Um, and unless I'm going to buy a brand new Mac Para wing, it's hard to get a logo, like, from the factory. Like, I think Ozone will do it from the factory. Probably, um, um, but it's it's so expensive. You know, with the new Mac Para Colorado two, um, is it Colorado two? Yes. Yeah. So we're gonna see a wheel fly a wing. Oh uh, yeah, a wheel fly logo uh, wing. I mean, you know. Yeah, I, I mean, I've heard of um, you know, like Never Trust a Skinny Chef Shane. He's got the the gauge lo logo on his wing. That's probably someone you could hook up with. I, oh, there you go. Like it, I can't go from ch the Charlie Soap wing to anything smaller because when I when I contacted Mac Para, they said, how big did the, you know, is can the logo, or I said, how big can the logo be? And they said, uh, well, it can be as big as you want it to be. Just put it on the, you know, make a PDF and put the put it on there. So I stretched it to the very edge of the wing yeah. on there. And they, and they said, uh, we can do this, but we're going to have to change our CAD program to allow for different colors all the way to the edge of the wing. Uh, do you mind investing whatever? And I've, I ended up having to spend a couple of extra hundred bucks for them to change their program. And so I could push the Charlie Soap wing, all the Charlie Soap logo all the way out to the edge. Would you, you know, you had, but you had that they, they came back and said, they, okay, how about this? And you kept saying, is that as big as is you can get it? Is that as big it? as you can get it? Like, <laughs> they I, they're like, well, like maybe, maybe we could do it bigger. I'm like, then do it bigger. Like, it's <laughs> however big you, that one. Yeah, the biggest <laughs> um so charlie soap is pretty you can see charlie's from easily a thousand feet you can still clearly see look at that that's charlie soap yeah and there's no uh, i don't think there's any other logo that's like that not a wow. not a le like a, a letter logo yeah. yeah so i've got the next thing that I, I think that it won't say charlie soap it'll just say charlie's really big but yeah, the, the next thing, I think, I, I don't know. I'm kind of torn between getting a Bodie wing with it on there and like having a huge logo, like a 41 meter with a logo <laughs> stretched all the way across it, you know, um, or, or, or like putting Charlie's on a smaller, like fast wing that I can show off with. Yeah. And so I, I, it's kind of a up in the air right now. I'll probably ah, it's up in the air. Time. That's hilarious. Did you see what he did there? Yeah, it's up in the air. So, yeah. Um, do y'all do y'all do flying so you know like? Did it just get under your skin like it did with me? Like uh, it with me? It's it was just a whole new thing. It was like. Like I put on a, either I put on a suit that would never be, yeah. Like I, I either put on a suit that would I would never take off again, or I did, somehow figured out that the skin that I was wearing had a zipper, and there was a pilot underneath, and I'll never realize like I'll never be something different. Like that's what I am. Do you know what I mean? I thoroughly know what you mean. That's I the mean, way I feel like they, about they, it. I'm an all or nothing type of guy. And when I say I'm going to do something, I don't just do it half hearted. I mean, I go all the way in. I mean, but not to the point where I do morning flights. I still don't do morning flights. I hate morning flights. You so. hate the wet. <laughs> yeah, I hate the wet. That's <laughs> it. That's all it is. <laughs> but but you, are, you got it so bad that you love the morning flights, the evening morning. flights, and the afternoon flights. And Mornings, like, I would prefer to take off on pavement. Yeah, actually, um, that was suggested to me the last time you I started getting them on the morning. Yeah, yeah, to take off in the pavement. This drives bone. Yeah, 
Like even when everything else is wet, this drives it back. So how do you think that affects the wing though? I mean, it's... I have never had anybody say that, that, that they can tell that I take off from pavement every fucking, excuse my right. language, every morning, every morning for 365 days, just about, I took off on pavement and, and nobody ever said that I've got like wear from lines or all the times that I've like pulled on a rock that was cemented into the, the yeah. road, you know, yeah. like never bothered it. The only time that I had some, some issue, and I think it could have happened anywhere, was coming in downwind landing and slapping the wing. The front. And it was front. and it was like well into my career. Yeah. You know, it wasn't it wasn't early on when you think a newbie's gonna hurt a wing. Anyways, yeah. I, I I I just did it wrong that day and like it was the Charlie Soap wing. I busted a bunch of cells on it. Dang. Yeah. yeah. How, how yeah. old how old is your Charlie Soap wing? It's a twenty seventeen. Wow. But it's got it's got fresh lines on it now though. And I I tested the porosity and it's it's A okay. So it's amazing. Yeah. As much flights as that thing's had. it's so uh, I mean the thing is though, it's a twenty seventeen wing. So like the twenty twenty three advanced epsilon dls that i have has i mean even though it's i mean the technology is so much better now yeah. five years later everything is super light you know yeah. everything is really lifty and efficient i mean everything launches beautifully because if it doesn't launch beautifully people don't buy it that's exactly you know, right. It's like really come along. Like the the market has started to 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 really blossom over the last five years. I and feel that like. would be a fine line too between okay, launching, you know, a better launch that could mean weaker material. You know what I mean, or less material. Less material. So, um, like you want it rough and and tumble yeah. and all that, but <laughs> like if you learn to fly well and learn to take care of your gear well you can start with something very dainty you know yeah. there's a lot of people that start with something very spindly and, and fluffy and yeah. lifty you know it's so uh, brian wants me to test fly at the new colorado tomorrow you think i should i've never flown a colorado i didn't fly the colorado i didn't fly, I haven't flown the two I, really i never flew a charger to say the truth i should i've flown I've started to fly a bunch of different stuff this year. Like I got the warp 18 under my belt. Yeah. And I'm flying a snake, not snake 18 on a trike, which was like a bullet. Yeah. Um, I've heard the snake is real kind of spicy. <laughs> I don't know if I'd be up for that. Yeah. And then somebody put me on a uh, an APCO single skin. And then I got to fly a BGD Luna and a BGD. What is the the A wing? Oh, the uh, not the one the. Uh, dang it! Uh, I know what you're talking about. It's you're awesome to like get to a point in my Magic. career where I can like borrow somebody's motor now. Magic. Like, thank BGD God man. for Aviator Paramotor. I mean, I hate to say that, like to get that on a sound bite that you have, but um, Aviator Paramotor, and like I don't know who's watching this, but. And it'll sound like I'm like blowing somebody up, but I went down there thinking that I knew everything there was to know. And it was a formality, you know, to learn how to foot launch. And that, that Jillian girl, she knew her shit. She, I think she only had like a year, like a year and a half of flying under her belt. And she was an excellent instructor. And I, I wrecked some gear one time. And it was because I refused to do what she told me to do. And from then on out, like I was good. And and like, I got 90 flights in two weeks and, or it was like 69 on the books. And then I like pumped out another like sh chunk right after the class. Um, the chunks a lot. Oh, the chunks <laughs> is like a solid, solid pump. Um, anyways, so now I can pick up a motor and go fly. Where before, like, unless I was striking, I, I was super nervous. And to, like, I say that it was awesome to fly an 80 just now, but 
like the biggest deal was that I could borrow an 80 and not worry about it at all. Is Just go the flying. First time you've flown an Adam 80? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. I was wow, first time flew that. That's awesome. Anyways. Well, I love that's... flying. Oh, yeah. I, I... Absolutely. Um, I love flying also. I think I've flown uh, an Adam 80, an EOS 100, uh, HE 125, a Molster 120, uh, 185, uh, Blackhawk uh, 220. And hopefully, if I make this, uh, this other carburetor working on this rodeo, I'll be uh, flying another Seminini. Ah, I haven't flown a Seminini yet. Um, I've gotten the Polini 303 250. The most 185 and the Adam 80 um, and the free flight stuff. I'd have to say the free flying stuff, it's pretty badass. Like, it feels like the future. Like, I, I don't know. Paramotoring is, is cool, and, and it's it's the future, too. I mean, it, we're definitely living in the future. But, like, a good wing and a nice harness and a helmet cost about as much as a paramotor without the wing mm -hmm. you know so you can go and just get a good harness and a free flag like now you got a, a hike and fly gear and it's in a backpack that like can go in your like it's yeah literally yeah, like it'll sit in your in passenger that. seat and like or it'll sit on the back of your motorcycle till you get to a, a, a free flight site you can hike up fly down yeah pack it up and ride I, that just it seems so cool to me I'd say it takes, and a lot I haven't done it yet, but I think it'll be so cool. It's got to be. It, take, it has to take a lot more. Um, I'm not going to say intelligence, but skill. It's so a lot to free of fly and to free fly right than it does, you know, to rely on a motor. So yeah, there there was a, a thing that um, Santa Croce kept saying, and he was saying that the guys that the guys that are really good have been in the sport a long time. And the only way to be in the sport a long time is to continually dial back from your your basics, your your baser instincts to to because like only the fucking Wahoo, sorry, all, right. only the only the Yahoos are out here doing this stuff, you know. And the people that want to have the wanna wanna be upper echelon, they have a tendency to push even harder than the rest of them. When really just being out there. And time under the canopy is gonna get you more in the long run than than um, pushing and pushing your limits. And and he's like, he's, I don't know. It, it was a cool take on it. Basically, just be there. Just get onto the field. Just 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 be at the mountain. Get into your gear and dial back every chance you get. You know, like always. You know. Watch yourself push, 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 but like at the end, be willing to like give up that last 30 minutes of flying before it gets nasty or, or give up that day that like there's only two people out on the field, you know, and everybody's kiting, just kite, you know, dial it back, like be the, be the back of the pack kind of guy. And in the end, you're going to be there longer than everybody and you're going to be an OG and you're going to be better than everybody. And he's like, that's, and that was a cool idea. It's, it's something that I think oh, we try to old gangster. I'm an old gangster. Yeah. Or, well, original gangster, I think. But I totally understand <laughs> that that's which uh, that you that's know, very like, true. You have to be there for a while to, yeah. to be there. You have to be that. I mean, there's a lot of newbies that want to be like the top of the heap, and that's. I mean, it's awesome. But like, you watch them push and push and push, and I've seen people that that push too hard and it doesn't matter how good they are they they end up either either they end up dialing it back and staying in the sport or they scare themselves and get out or they die or they get hurt and, and have to leave the sport you know what i mean so like the only real way in the future is dialing it back and like yeah. and going easy that's the only Statistically speaking, only real way to stay in the sport is to just keep dialing it back. I'm thinking, I mean, you not too much, but I mean, said that better. I mean, really, that's the, the best I've ever heard anybody say that. 
Uh, and part of dialing it back for me is remembering why I got into the sport to begin with. And that was just to fly, just right. to enjoy myself. Yeah, but somewhere along the line, it's like you cross that line. It's like, I want to do this next. I want to do this next. I do. So, yeah, yeah, that was an awesome way of saying it. You don't realize that, like, you're a daredevil until you start doing this stuff. And then once you do, you're like, oh, my God, I've got a responsibility. Yep. So, like, daredevil as long as possible. Yeah. But that's only going to happen if I dial it back. Um, but that was a Santa Croce thing. And he's talked about that in videos and stuff where he's like, um, you can't keep pushing and pushing and pushing because the guys that, that are all about flying and that's all they do, they're going to get hurt. Yeah. They, they, they will eventually get hurt. And the, because they're not thinking about the consequences, they just want to fly. And, and I, it sucks. Like historically speaking, though, I mean, he's he was speaking a story. You know, I, I don't have that history in the sport yet, but sort of do, though. I got hurt. Yeah, I mean, that was a learning experience. I mean, I'm my sure. friends have, have, I've got two friends that have broken backs, if not way more. There's well, a you've thing been flying, paragliding. Like, you've been again. flying for seven years and 400 flights a year for the last few years. That's uh, you've got some serious time under that wing. Yeah, yeah, under a bunch of wings. Well, under a couple of wings. I wouldn't say a bunch. There's there are people under, that have way under more. Wing. <laughs> under any wing, you've got some serious yeah. time, and yeah. you've learned a lot. Like people, people wonder every once in a while. I go for these long flights, like three or four hours, and people ask me, "What the heck are you doing?" Well, I'm constantly thinking, I'm constantly planning, I'm I'm learning my fuel capacity, I'm learning how uh, just incredible amounts of things. I'm yeah. Sure, yeah, I'm not doing touch and goes, but I am learning a lot and I can't it's it's amazing what you can learn just from sitting there under the wing and cruising. Yeah, um it's just um what do you call that? Just Im immersion or um, just are the, being there. Are the, broken, are the broken backs from PPG or free flight? Somebody's asking. Well, I haven't been around the free flight guys enough, so the broken backs I've seen are from PPG. Wow. Okay. You know, um, we Nick got super lucky last year with uh, a broken pelvis. Mm -hmm. You know, I got super lucky with a broken femur. Um, there's, there's, and there's a lot of guys that didn't get lucky. You know, there's Jeff from, um, Tucker's friend, Jeff. Yeah. And, and, and a couple other guys, um, Predator Paramotor got hurt real bad last year. Um, just, it's so dangerous and, and we get so complacent and like, I feel like if everybody just spoke safety all the time, like that shit, stuff wouldn't happen. You know, yeah, like, I mean, that's right. You have to ask all yourself, the time. What, what, what? If the person, if if the pilot was just flying normal and doing, you know, normal activities, would that accident have happened? Right. And and was there one word that like some like a fellow pilot could have said to say, you know, check that line, or you know, did you get an inspection? How often do you get an inspection? Or like, are are we willing to shame at other pilots? Because I think we should be. I think we should be willing to shame. I, I should be, you know, open to being shamed and open to shaming other people. You shouldn't have told me that. I'm, I'm, I think so. <laughs> I, I believe so. I think if you don't, then you're you're limiting your experience as a pilot. You're, you're well, not. You know, you're not getting some everything. People, some people aren't willing to say something to you. Like I went out onto the field the other day, got prepared, all ready to go, fired up, motor running, all of that, and then I realized my. We need that. Sugar for the moonshine. So I'm so glad, but, but and nobody said anything to me. Said anything? We didn't hear what you said, Jim. What? Right. Say that again. So I got it set up on the field, and then I realized motor was running. Everything was. I was about to go, and I went to check my chin strap. Realized I didn't have a helmet on, and this was at this was at uh, Salton Sea. Tons of people all over. Not a single person mentioned it to me. 
they just thought that when I started walking back, the guy said to me, oh, I just thought you were one of those types of guys who wanted to fly like that. And yeah. I was like, heck no. I was well, it's, I don't know. I, I'm, I didn't get it. I, I mean, some people did. Um, and, and I'm not saying I got into the sport to make enemies, but I didn't make it. I didn't get into the sport to make friends. And, and I got into this sport because I wanted to learn how to fly. And then when I got in, once I realized that what I'm doing, like the safer I do it, the, the, the you know, the safer I let everybody else be or try to make everybody else, the safer I'm going to be. The safer I'm going to be, like, the you know, where I am, the safer I'm going to make everybody else just out of example. I, I don't know. I, I, I got hurt, and it's just kind of – there are ways to continue to fly after you get hurt. You just have to pay your penance or whatever. I don't know. Something like that. You got to so get back on the I, course. I, I agree with you. Yeah. If you yeah. uh, see something that is an issue that you might think is an issue personally, mention it to the guy across, mention it to them if they're trying to take off or whatever, just, and if they don't care, they don't care, but at least. And, if, they, yeah. and if you're wrong, then be wrong. Who gives yeah. a shit? Sorry. Who cares? Who, yeah. Who cares if you're wrong? Like be willing to, to say, isn't it stupid to do that? You know, yeah. like, isn't this dumb? Like I, I thought, I heard that like going up at two thirty when it's gusty is dumb. Why? Why are you doing this? You know, and yeah. let let the person be like, well, because I want to. Yeah, and and consciously decide. You know, he has to like voice the words. I'm deciding to risk my life. You know, so step off, and that's okay. You know, but like at least we should be. The people that say, isn't that stupid? Or, you know, I mean, people have done that to me. And and there were certain things that I was ready to do. Like I can do 13, 14 mile an hour forwards on a trike where most people wouldn't try that stupid stuff. But well, it's still nice to know that some people will come up and be like, man, shouldn't you not do that? You know? Yeah. I can yeah. see where the helmet, somebody might let it slide. But what if you saw somebody trying to ground start their paramotor? Right. We should kick him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but we should jump just Get away jump from up, that. Just jump up and land both heels right on their chest. <laughs> like someone someone It'll be better me. for them. It's way better for them. They'll be able to them Sorry, but they'll yeah, be they able to walk that off. Yeah. Like they they'll have a hand. Like you know Golly, I I hate that stuff. There, there's something to that, too, that, I mean, and this is something that's happened to me just recently. And there's a, a certain pilot that, you know, I've talked to several times and I've mentioned the fact that I think they're pushing it too hard, you know, and they take it with the grain of salt or whatever. I mean, they 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 heard what I said. So I I would feel terrible if something happened to that pilot and. You should feel better. I now. didn't say anything. Right. If you didn't, you know, I yeah. just let it slide. So I kind of feel like I've done my part. Yeah. You know, Jim, the helmet stays on your head just fine without a chin strap attached. I know. Yeah. Well, I've been, <laughs> that. I've been there. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Let's, let's let's not know. try that one. Let's not try that one. Keep keep that chin strap on there, nice, nice and tight. Absolutely. I think we got some uh, questions in the super chat. Uh, to, um, Steve, anything on the super stat, uh, super chat questions? Anybody give a I, I haven't really seen any questions. Uh, wait, well, no, that's for somebody else. You put one on. You put one on here, so I'm letting you say it. Uh, I did. Let me see. Well, that one's from way back, and the only other one I posted, I posted that you had the wrong filter in your cart. Yeah. Um, Jim CR120 was wondering, yeah, as an English major, do you ever find yourself biting your tongue in the day to day conversations besides all the swearing stopping? <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I had a wife that like really tried to get me to stop swearing, but my mother would swear like a sailor at church. She was the she was the organist, and it, it just I don't know why. Sorry, I apologize. What, what were we talking about again? 
So what was the question? I was wondering if you ever bite your tongue in day-to-day -day conversations because of an English, an English major. English major. Uh, the, the worst is to focus through or, or, or keep like keep my focus through somebody's not using uh, the uh, possessive correctly. Sorry, I know that's stupid, but like not to an English major. Right. Yeah, like like when when like I don't know. I, it's hard to say. And I say like all the time. I'm the worst. I, you know, and I, I'm constantly <laughs> using colloquialisms and I'm I'm constantly swearing, but the possessive pronouns and possessive like the apostrophe S that you're supposed to put on the end of some. Anyways, yeah. And I, I'll try to point it out if I ever see it, but I, I see it a lot in parameter videos. Where well, give, give, give us a couple examples real quick, just for people fun. People don't speak correctly. Like, <laughs> me correcting all of the videos is, is just a pain to my ears yeah because it's my correcting all of the videos yeah you would it's not it. me correcting all the videos if, if you were to ever say that or write it you're supposed to say my correcting the videos pisses people off <laughs> not me correcting the videos pisses people yeah. off my correcting the videos pisses people off anyways uh, that's dumb so that's my english major little that's the English. It's the possessive. Yeah, it's the possessive. It's and you'll hear it if if it's pointed out to you for about a week. You'll never stop hearing. Give yeah, us give us a never. couple more. Give us a couple more examples. Uh, you you have to hear it in real life. Like, but I can be like, did you did you hear that? Yeah. Like, um, you. I got an example. What, what, what really apple, thought, right? What, say it again. <laughs> you and me are gonna go to bad apples, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, the one that I mess up all the time is we, your and you are. I screw yeah. that up all the time. <laughs> yeah, like, but you wow, can get away you with are? all that stuff when you're texting. Yeah, and, and when you're talking, you can get away with it, too. Right. Um, <laughs> that, that one, at least you can get away with. But, like, the possessive, I don't know. It's something my dad always harped on with me, and... You can hear it, and it's almost the the difference between somebody that is um, classically educated, or you know. Do you ever get Do you ever get pissed off at people talking about Illinois or WalMarts or like salmon? WalMarts or the internets or salmons? <laughs> salmon or yeah. Kansas? I looked that up yesterday. As a matter of fact, <laughs> it's a it's salmon. Uh, it's supposed to be salmon. Salmon, yeah. But some people say salmon. The best one, the one that gets me is irregardless. I don't like when people say irregardless. Yeah. My, my really ex-wife would make fun of me for saying that I was an English major because I barely read anything. But <laughs> The one that's really bugging me lately is, you know. I, don't, no. I, I cannot no. understand why people are going to tell me something, but they tell me, you know, before they're telling me something. For crying out loud, if I know the damn thing, why tell me? Hey, yeah, hey, like, hey uh, Jim, hey Jim, you know your uh, your 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 maple syrup smelling money smells good. <laughs> you know, you hey, know? The, one that, the one that gets me is the one where they end when they end a sentence with an A. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anybody who does Jim. that. <laughs> or, or what's or what's worse is when they tell me what it's all about. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay <laughs> make sure to pick up a lot of decals from the event down there <laughs> we love the decals sir <laughs> yeah like, oh, yep. decals. okay okay here's another one for you guys z28 i don't know that sounds so feminine to me z28 isn't that a that's a car isn't it that's a car yeah, yeah. It's a car but I mean, it's supposed to be a muscle car. It's supposed to be a Z28. That sounds cooler, actually. Yeah, I agree. But so, but we call it Z28. Yeah, yeah that's the Americans. That is, I don't know. Well, yeah, well, I, Z's dead. I rock. <laughs> that's all right. I like I like my aluminum cans, not my aluminium cans. Aluminium. You remember from from Pulp Fiction? 
He's like, who's Zed, honey? No, who's Zed, baby? Zed's, Zed's dead. Because <laughs> he stole Zed's bike. Anyways. All right. But I want to hear how you liked your cross country, man. You haven't said a <laughs> word the entire show, so I'm just – you're there. What yeah, happened? How far did y'all go? What, what are you talking I about? I don't even know. I lost the LZ. So I couldn't get back. I was like, oh, man, where's it at? <laughs> That's what gaggles for. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have – I don't have internet on my phone. Oh, okay. <laughs> so how far did you go? Y'all went pretty far, though, right? <laughs> Well, yeah, pretty far. Longer than I've ever been. <laughs> well, that's still cool. I mean, yeah, on your fifth awesome. flight to do a cross, cross country, that's awesome. If I do yeah, that, I will go into bad airspace and they will shoot me down and right. kill me. <laughs> Lucky I had a great instructor and he he was up there with me. I was following him around. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Long as somebody knew where they were going. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just don't want to lose them. Yeah, if you lose them, you would be screwed. I guess I'm landing. <laughs> hey, we're, we're running out of battery juice here, Sean. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with us. We definitely appreciate you, go. Yo, uh, James, uh, have a great uh, evening. Thank you for jumping on the show. We'll fly. Thank you for all the B-roll in the background when James was uh, uh, chatting with us. Y'all have a great time over at Bad Apples. Yeah, be and safe down there. Absolutely. James, tell be us a little safe. bit about your uh, your Charlie Soap and uh, how we can go check that out real quick. Um, look at look at charliesoap.com, um, C-H-A-R-L-I-E-S-O-A-P. Um, and we have a hypoallergenic laundry detergent that is better than anything in the world. And we have some surface cleaners. Um, you can get it at Earth Fair, Fresh Market, Whole Foods, Lowe's Foods, Kroger, any owners, any any store owned by Kroger, and now Walmart. Dang. Oh, wow, me some Charlie. So yeah, we got, we got a new wing. <laughs> Let's go and buy some soap to support your new Charlie soap wing. Please buy as much as you can. You're welcome to just put it down the drain. They say that it's safe to just throw in the trash. So just keep buying it and th keep throwing in the trash. No, don't do that because it's some good stuff. Hey, James, <laughs> is it available up in Canada? Uh, there is a distributor out there, or we had one for a very long time. They, we were in um, home hardware or house hardware. Or, I can't remember. Oh um, Martin, have but we I don't think we're we have it anymore up there so I'm sorry but we do we you can definitely order it online um we were in um Amazon Canada so you should be able to get it there <laughs> the other Nick said he's going to Walmart right now is is it already in the Walmarts or are you just okay, so, so it left for Walmart DC's last or oh, the distribution centers last week last thursday and so it's being rolled out to all 42 of their their distribution centers um and going into 500 stores so i don't know if it'll be you know there's probably 2500 stores or 2000 stores something like that and uh, anyways so we're only getting 500 of them and they're going to figure out how well it sells and in what kind of demographic it'll sell. And then they'll hopefully, they'll send it out to all those stores that, that it kind of hits well at. Right. And, and anyways, I'm learning all about it. I, I'm in the production side of things. Um, but if, if please give it a try. It's my, my me and my, my family and, and all of my friends um, because I basically just have employees that are my friends and they they're all the breadwinners of their families and so we've got 10 families that are represented by charlie soap and we're doing pretty good and so we, we could appreciate the support yeah you know if you bought me a charlie soap wing i'd fly it <laughs> you know I guess, it's so funny i've gotten that that offer from a lot of people i didn't think that i would get that offer 
Here's another one. Just there saying. You go. <laughs> there you go. Just, yep. just start get, just start giving out those Charlie Soap wings, and you'll be seen all over the United States and the world. Yeah, Nick's yeah, t-shirts, man. Just get uh, for the just, wings. No t-shirts. Yeah. I mean, screw that. That's cool. we need wings. <laughs> cars. I could give away cars with it on. <laughs> Jets, even. Yeah. I used to be allergic to doll soap. Is that because of how much lye they put in it, or? What do you think that is? It would just—I would just break out when I use dial soap. Really? Yeah. Anytime, anytime that you have a detergent or a soap that leaves a residue behind, you have a chance to be allergic to it. So, what you want to look for is a soap or a detergent that rinses thoroughly. If it rinses thoroughly, then it doesn't matter if it cleaned anything or not it will at least not hurt your skin okay, because cool. it won't be left behind. I thought all the, so uh, that's the soap, only thing I can... all, all the soap instructions always say rinse thoroughly. Do they not? They do. And then. Uh oh, I think that was battery power. Well, yeah. I guess we just lost them <laughs> yeah. on, on that note. Oh, wait, he's back. Oh, there they are. Oh, okay. So, so they do say rinse thoroughly. Um, the thing is, um, okay, so on detergents, if just if you want to do a little soap thing here, um, detergents, what the, basically they've been making the same detergents since the 1950s, since um, Procter & Gamble bought out the, their patents for synthetic soaps from somebody in the 50s. And they published the book about all the detergents and everybody's been using that same detergent formula since the fifties um, or a variation thereof. And so it doesn't rinse very well. It doesn't clean very well, but they do use it and they put brighteners in there because it doesn't get rid of uh, the stains very well. And they put scents in there because sometimes it doesn't get rid of BO like it should. And then sometimes they put lubricants in there because those brighteners and those perfumes will eventually cake up on your clothes and on your machine. And you will, you'll notice that if you ever have had a washing machine fixed by a, a, a technician, they'll say, they'll, they'll always talk about the residues and, and the gunk inside the machine. And it's from the detergent that you're using. And they'll always recommend something but there's really only one detergent out there that doesn't leave a residue behind, and that's mine. <laughs> every other one leaves some type of residue behind. And even if they say that it's hypoallergenic, what they're going to tell you is that they leave, they don't leave a, a, a residue that you can be allergic to. Um, but still, it's, it's a one in a million shot. You could still be allergic to something because it's there. And, and, you know, you could have some weird adverse effect, but if you have nothing there and it's just cotton with no residues on there, most people are not allergic to plain cotton or plain polyester or any nylon or anything like that. Most people are not allergic to those garments. They're allergic to whatever is attracted to those garments in the washing process or in the out in, in the world. You know your stuff, man. Jim, I've been selling soap for a while. Jim <laughs> wants to know, is there any soap that's good for moving stains on wings? I cannot recommend that you use my product to for, wing, for wings, but they recommend a mild detergent, I think. And I produce a mild detergent. There you so go. There, that's a safe are, way. There are people that, uh, and some people say don't ever put any detergents on there. And that's a very good idea because every other detergent could uh, even either leave a residue that could age your wing quickly, or it could affect the, some type of glue or some type of co coating on your wing. So the best thing is just to keep it clean and rinse it. I, I, I've heard of people putting it in like a, like dunking their wing in a 55 gallon drum of, of water just so they knew that it was clear water and that it was just going to rinse up out and they had a perfect place to set it out. And that's the best thing to do, I've seen. But I've also heard of people 
taking Charlie soap and putting it in that five gallon, that 55 gallon drum and it coming out spotless and crinkly and like crispy again. So I've heard that. I don't know if it's the truth that I can't, I can't say <laughs> that you should do it, but I've heard that it brings the crispy back. Don't um, put it in the dryer. Also, <laughs> um, I heard that you can, you can, um, wash your risers and get a lot of dirt out of your risers if you wanted to unhook all the lines and throw them in the washing machine. Huh. That's yeah. actually a good idea. There's a couple of guys that did that to, to get their cleats to work again. Their, their um, trim cleats. And they said that once they got that, super because... clean and got the got the fabric working again, like like the clean again, it, it would really bite. So. I wouldn't yeah. doubt that those things pick up a lot of dirt because when it was down at the Arizona Flying Circus in Salton, they, I picked up a lot of that magnetic sand and I still, yeah. every single flight, I still am brushing off that magnetic <laughs> sand and there's none of it around here. Yeah. Yeah, it's like all iron oxide out there. I guess my brother would be proud that I'm some kind of new chemistry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's pretty cool. That was, that was my, my dad's. We need, my we dad's need to have James. Down was when I, well, anytime I, I, I appreciate all the talking. I love some oral flying. Yeah. If you're not flying, you like talking about it. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's sitting around doing oral flying. <laughs> have you ever <laughs> seen that? It's from like, I think it was, it might have been like Top Gun or something. Maybe. They were like, everybody's having. <laughs> and I think we finally lost them. I was going to say, man, we need to get James back on just to talk about soap in the future for sure. There it is. There it is. Hey, Sean. Yeah. yeah so I was like, we're doing oral flying, which is almost as good as the real thing. Yeah, I, I wanted to say I have not been able to see any of the chat tonight, so I just want to send my love to the chatters. Yeah, and, me too. Uh, too. Yeah. So, hello. And I need to go back and take a look. And I just realized that Eric Von Eric said, shout out to PPG Grandpa, Paramotor, Arkansas. Can't wait for my first flight. Uh, donated five bucks in super chat. And also, uh, Eric Von Eric donated another five dollars. Sean Simons, Pyramid, Arkansas, most patient instructor ever had while learning any skill. So, definitely appreciate you guys in the super chat. Thank you so much for the donations. You guys are absolutely amazing. Very nice. Hell yeah. Thank Excellent. you. Thank you and, very much. And definitely, James, we need to have you back just so you can talk all about detergent. We need to know all about detergent in the future. I would. I would love to do that. Anytime that you need me to do that, I will do that. Uh, but if, um, the flying, I, I, I've never had something that I wanted to be so knowledgeable about, or I've never had anything that I thought was worth studying except for flying. I, I love flying. And, and just anytime you want to talk flying, I, I, I'm, it doesn't matter when it is, apparently. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't. Uh, other than when I'm flying, uh, I, I can't talk flying. flying. <laughs> yep. But uh, when I'm not flying, I do want to talk flying. <laughs> I think if you get into the sport, you have to be in 110. percent There's no half wanting to fly. I mean, you either really want to do it. That's why I think we're so passionate about it. Is because we learn something every day, you know, and constantly keep updating our skills and everything every day so that we can be better pilots. Exactly. Everybody that I've go for it. Sorry, I, was gonna, I was gonna say, you know, like tonight we learned that, you know, if we want to wash your wing, we put it in the washer with some Charlie soap. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, just, just throw it in the dryer and it'll be perfectly crispy. I think that's what he said. He's gonna start putting it on that box. Do not put your glider in. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know about that. I think they if there ever was a detergent to wash your wing with, you could probably use Charlie soap, but I don't know if they recommend that. I wouldn't use anything else. Anyway. I hear you. But, well, thanks. But anyways, so yeah, yeah, thanks for having me on, man. I, I really appreciate it. And, like, thanks for listening to me jaw about flying for 
an hour. Sorry. Well, we had a great but, time. And like I said, Will was outside doing some B-roll for you. I mean, it worked out really great, guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I think so. Uh, take lots of video because if you don't video it, it didn't happen, right? That's it. right. That's right. Hey, shout out for um, Fly It for Gage Fly In, the new fly in in Bowling Green, Florida, June 8th through the 11th. I can give you a 99%, 99.9% chance of loving that fly in. Just that Will, awesome. It's Will's video on Bad Apples will be out in August. You guys get ready. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> set set your <laughs> put it on the calendar. <laughs> Man, that's the worst. Like the when I went to work for an aviator and and take their trailer out to Salt and Sea and everything, I got a ton of footage, but it takes me three months yeah. to get to it, let alone to to the to edit yeah, it editing. all and then and, and then yeah, releasing it at the right time. By the time I get to it, it's like, did I help you? You know, like five months later, they're probably thinking that was the worst investment we could have you know, done. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Three months of my life spent in front yeah, of a computer. Like we all waited for him to make this stupid and <laughs> spent all this money. Anyways, I, I, I'm afraid that I wasn't very helpful for them. But all I know is that they're... They've got something going on over there at Aviator. I know that they've got something going on because they they produce pilots. They produce a ton of pilots. And so, they, just, they just opened a new place uh, outside of Nashville, from what I saw. So that's yeah. that's much closer. Yeah, and that did. Uh, he's he's kind of young. His his name's Jake um, Hutzler or Metzler or something like that. I don't know. Anyways, he, he is a phenomenal pilot, and he is a super calm and uh, patient teacher. I, I was I was blown away by I don't I think one of the coolest things that Eric Farewell does is recruiting. So his his best skill is finding the people that you wouldn't think would be good at stuff. Or you wouldn't, I, I wouldn't think that that a, a group of, of teachers that young would would show such, such. Um, Hut, Hutzler? Maturity. maturity. Is that his last Hutzler. name, Hutzler? Yeah, Jake Hutzler. He, uh, he, he's a pretty good pilot, man. And I, I like to watch him fly. He, he's, he's, he's nice and smooth. And, and that's what you want. And not only that, he's a likable guy. So you want to like. I don't know. I think they did well. Not to blow him up too much, but like yeah. uh, we had, we had I, I got to I got to meet all those guys from Aviator, and they're all really really nice. They all treated me like I was a brother, like instantly. It was kind of cool. So well, that's one thing I like about the job. sport. That's one thing I like about the sport. Everybody just takes you in. Uh, no matter what school you go to, you can go and check out all these different schools. They're all wonderful schools. I yeah, uh, I, I think it was. It's been awesome um how everybody knows everybody like i could show up to any school and they're like oh it's james like hell yeah it's charlie soap and <laughs> I, know, I, I, I love that I, I just love this whole sport this whole thing so it's probably all the dumb videos i've made but like oh your channel you tell, tell them about your channel your youtube channel i got a youtube channel it's uh james sutherland um, I, I think it's just James Sutherland, um, but it's got a caricatured face of me on there. So yeah. it's not like a picture. It's a, like a drawn picture of my face. You've got one video on there. It's got like a gazillion views. Yeah, I've got 95,000 views on one video. And that was from where my buddy got hurt and he, he held this video and he didn't let anybody see it. And I was like, man, if you let me show it to the world i bet you i can get you trained and he ended up getting trained by DeFore after I, I published that video sweet yeah that was pretty cool i think i got the link for it you got 338 336 subscribers that sound right yeah okay yeah that's about it. that's about all i got which is i don't that's, know that's i don't know 300 i don't Seriously. know 330 people 
<laughs> yeah, I know, right? You got a lot of friends on Facebook. I just got a new Instagram follower. I I have gotten a, a ton of Instagram followers over the last six months. I went from like two to like five hundred Instagram followers. Really? So if you haven't subscribed, check out his channel. Yeah, check my Instagram subscribe. it's James dot Sutherland dot one hundred. Is that it? There you yeah. go. Um, and that one's got a, and yeah, the I would say my favorite recent video is the uh the one i did in salt and sea where i went in the canyons that, that's my favorite it's just music and flying and it's some of the most beautiful flying i've, I've videoed yeah I, I don't know it was awesome not only did you video it you got the experience at first hand oh like man it. alex <laughs> mateus was out there flying with us man like the the best slalom pilot in the world was out there ripping it up with us like mm -hmm. sideways in the canyons it was it was awesome just one of the guys yeah it just it was cool man hey we're gonna be back this isn't goodbye we're gonna be back on friday night sean we're gonna be live from bad apples 2023 at 8 p.m on youtube remember that <laughs> wait friday i'll be doing my show friday at eight how am i how can i watch y'all oh man that's right oh well we're what we're gonna do is i don't know the ball's in your court, Sean. One of them's going to have to go. Yeah. Sorry, Steve. <laughs> we'll miss you, man. <laughs> I know, right? I'll, I'll miss you guys. <laughs> yeah, might just have to stick with uh, the vaping on Friday since we'll be doing the paramotor thing. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Well, Wait, so I'll be I'll at a fly-in anyway. Yeah, I'm going to be at a fly-in. Well, there you go. Well, oh, yeah. So are you going to be doing a show, Steve? I don't see how I I don't know what kind of internet, if any, oh, is at that airport. Causing all this trouble for nothing then. So eight o'clock, right? On yeah. Friday. We'll be yeah, back from bad apples. You're going to get me a drink, guys. Yeah. And, I'll try uh, to live in from night. where I'm at. We'll have two fly-ins at once. How about that? There you go. <laughs> we can compare notes. Are, are we still on for that, Sean? I sure hope so. You better uh, text me the day before to make sure I don't forget. I'm an old grandpa, you know. <laughs> All right, I'll do that. <laughs> well, maybe uh, I'll be at the Butt Fan Dust Off, so maybe I'll join you. Oh, oh my happy. gosh. That'd be awesome. Three right. fly ins at once? Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> That's like a YouTube first right there. Oh, I know, there right? It's just there like overload. I'm going to break the internet. <laughs> <laughs> well, good night, all. Good, good night. night. Thank we'll you so much again, guys. Appreciate y'all. Thanks for having me, man. Good I night. really appreciate it. Absolutely, buddy. Thanks, it was great. All right. Bye-bye. Later yeah. on. Uh, this is going to be really cool. So we're going to have the bad apples. Um, we're going to be doing a live stream. We're going to have Jim and hopefully Scuba, all of us, on there from different fly-ins on Friday at 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. There you go. Oh. That'll be about sunset anyway. I'll probably be can't be flying right then anyway so why not yeah join us man i'm not gonna join while i'm in the air yeah let me just, let me just get on zoom while i'm in the air house look y'all can you see should it. It. you should do it that'd be awesome <laughs> yeah i mean it, de it depends if the weather's nice and it is calm air then maybe but otherwise there's no way i don't want to drop my phone from 800 feet <laughs> I'll have you fly, it. You fly that low? Come on, get higher. <laughs> I, I could over there because we'll be unrestricted. I can go way up over there. So that's good. That way, if you drop it, you can swoop down and catch it. There you go. <laughs> I don't think I got my wing, don't swoop that fast. <laughs> put, put a little parachute on your phone. There you go. <laughs> you know, I never thought of that. Yeah, you could do like a little parachute. Um, type of case or something so if you did lose it it'd go foop and just fly, float down like those little army that'd be men. awesome right? i yeah. see my phone is floating oh it's going in the water it's going in the water <laughs> <laughs> you have like a little flash on it or something some strobe or something going that'd be pretty cool <laughs> that sounds awesome well jim uh as scuba steve and butch fly i tell you what you guys are awesome hey butch fly do you want to tell us a little bit about your uh your fifth fly today since you know, we we're still on and it was awesome. I loved it. I got a great instructor and he makes sure I did just he makes sure I do good. <laughs> I'm go? really wore out. <laughs> oh, wore out. <laughs> yeah, we've been getting up like 
five o'clock every morning. <laughs> did you blow many launches or, I mean, did that wear you out or? Uh, no, not today. I actually uh, got a little off, well, oscillating. Uh -huh. I got to work on that. You know, I've been doing pretty good, but this morning I wasn't, I, you know, I was kind of tired and it yeah. didn't take long for me to cramp up after I got back on the ground. Okay. Uh, cool. Don't, don't yeah. let him fool you. Don't let him fool you. He is doing absolutely amazing out of everything that he's done. Uh, the, the blown launch was only because it, it, uh, it just came off a little bit to the side. And he, as a pilot, decided he was going to kill it and reset up. There That's you cool. go. So he did, yeah. he, he did what he was supposed to do. That's right. So how far did you Thank go? you. Thank you. I'm so hard on myself. Well, it's better to kill it than let it keep running and the wing come down and then the lines get caught in the prop. That that would be bad. So, yeah, yeah it's better just yeah. to shut it down. You can always set up and go again, you know? Right. It's like that saying, it's better to be on the ground wishing you were in the air than in the air wishing you were on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that we did maybe a 30-mile round trip. Um, nice. Uh, country. So, nice. Yeah. It he, was a long time. It when was we awesome. went to a when, particular destination and then came back, or did you uh, we didn't we didn't land. Um, we just uh, went to a destination and turned around. Um, wanted to make sure it was safe for him, obviously. And when we got back, his uh, gas was about that much. So wow. we we did it. We did it absolutely perfect. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, well, that's fun. Oh. thank you guys. I enjoyed it. And you think he'll uh, get that Charlie soap up there and a Tim Hortons? Maybe you can get some then. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna have to get me some Charlie soap. Oh yeah, she's she's pretty. more allergic to soap than I used to be. Really allergic to, like I said, dial, but she's allergic to most soap. So I'll try that, and if she likes that, then we'll just keep buying that. Shoot. Yeah. Or at least for the clothes. You know, if it's just detergent. Yeah. Really awesome. Well, guys, uh, uh, we're going to be getting up really early in the morning. So, uh, Scuba, Steve, tell us a little bit about what you do on Friday nights and how we check that out. Friday nights, I do a show about vaping mainly, but also talk about paramotor stuff. But this Friday, like I said, I'll probably be at a fly-in, so... I don't know what my channel is going to do. I'm going to have to post something on Facebook because if I do join in from the fly in, then it's going to be completely, it's going to be on Sean's channel, not my channel. So it's going to be weird. But um, yeah, you can just go to paramotordude.com. That'll take you straight to my YouTube channel. And there you go. Excellent. Um, and also, too, real quick, because, you know, Butch Fly, you know, he's, starting to upload, he's starting to do videos and stuff. So Butch Fly, tell us a little bit about your YouTube channel and how do we get to it? Uh, PPG Butch and Butch Fly, ppgbutch.com, or you can go to Facebook and put you in Butch Fly and check me out. Um, putting what I can on there. I'm not a real good at the editing, but I'm getting a little bit better. <laughs> I got a great teacher at that, too. <laughs> well, with 30 years of doing computer engineering and stuff, I can help them out just a wee bit. But, um, you know, whatever. But, yeah, go to ppgbutch.com, and that goes over to his YouTube channel. And just search for Butch Fly on YouTube. And also, he's put himself up a brand-new page, Fly Butch Fly. And if you can, if you find that, he's going to be putting up some really spectacular stuff on that Facebook page. So thank you, yes, Butch, sir. for doing all the cool stuff that you're doing. And thank uh, you. we definitely appreciate all the fun stuff that we get to watch on YouTube and Facebook. Also, we got Jim with his maple syrup selling, smelling money. What would you say that you don't like? You don't like, you know, or you, what was it? Is that what you said? Yeah. You know? You know. Yeah, I don't so. like being told what I know already. Well, you know, Why tell me that I know it. Well, you know, <laughs> you know, I think that you're pretty cool, you know, and um, I think, you know, your printing and publishing place is pretty good, you know. 
tell us a little bit about that and how do we get up with you in your flying shenanigans on YouTube? In case you, know. you don't know, you can get a hold of me through carepp.com or uh, give me a call at uh, 306-946-4027 and you'll get a hold of us and we'll help you out with whatever you need printed. And if you'd like to check out some paramotor videos, then you can check out, go to careppg.com and you'll find lots, lots. Find lots of cool stuff. That's awesome. And I hear that PPG Grep is worth 10%. What is that all about? A boot. <laughs> Say what? <laughs> PPG Grandpa's worth 10%? What is that all about, you know? <laughs> we're, we're supposed to be speaking English, not American. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Um, now I don't even know what we were talking about. <laughs> I don't know what <laughs> you're you're right. either. The 10%, 10%, man. The 10%. Mention, mention, care, or mention uh, PPG Grandpa and you'll get 10% off whatever you order. That is awesome. Man, I tell you what, you guys make me really happy. Um, I love doing this show every Monday night. Um, Jim has really helped us out a lot with the PPG calendar, ppgcalendar.com. Check that out too. You can get your very own calendar. So if you're out at Bad Apples and you got a lot of really awesome pictures, get up with Jim and get your very own Bad Apples calendar made. And you can go there at PPG calendar, right? Not calendars, calendar. Calendar. Is it, yes. is it R or ers? It's R, A R. R. Calendar. R, R. That reminds me, why are, why are pirates so angry? They just are. <laughs> <R. laughs> All right, guys, my name is Sean Simons. You know me as PPG Grandpa out there in the paramotor community. Uh, you can find me at pbggrandpa.com or iflyparamotors.com. I'm usually out at my flight school, which is paramotorarkansas.com. And also we got the new nonprofit, runintothesky.org, where we help disabled people, disabled veterans, learn to fly and possibly get that adaptive paramotor or flying machines if you have some really severe disabilities. So check out runintothesky.org. We definitely appreciate any type of gifts. And we have a, uh, what is it? We got, we finally got this, guys, where we got the Run Into the Sky from Cash App, which is really cool. So if you want to donate to Run Into the Sky, you can do that through Cash App. And also, if you want to just send us a check, we got the information down below. Now, if you do send a gift, send a self-addressed stamped envelope and we'll send you a gift back some stickers and things and also put you in the raffle for a brand new reserve matter of fact butch just got a brand new reserve also yes i did <laughs> and uh you know we definitely appreciate everything that y'all do you guys have a wonderful day wonderful evening a wonderful week I hope everything's absolutely amazing for y'all. We'll see you next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Um, blue skies. And I hope that all your paramotor activities are amazing and you're able to run into the sky. We'll see you next week. Peace out, y'all. Peace. Hey, with the thumbnail. All right. Peace. Yeah, I guess <laughs> we'll have to go back and get a thumbnail from the actual. Yeah, video. we'll have to wait for Will. Man. Oh, well. <laughs> See you next time, y'all. Peace out. Yeah. See you, guys.